Oh, right, so let's get everybody warmed up into the chat box, please. Could you write your favourite colour? So into your chat box, please. Let's have your favourite colour. Thank you. Green, blue, super fab. I just like to always warm people up because uh, we are going to be using the chat box quite a bit. And now anybody that can't hear me is like, why is everybody writing all these colours into the chat box? <coughs> Excuse me. All right frog in my throat to begin turquoise that's a good choice of color i've just left the quote on the uh the the screen uh just for a, a minute just before we really get underway i was really enjoying the uh thoughts that you were having um during the the break uh and it was interesting because obviously you saw it in a really different way to me um but um i think all the points are really valid i was making lots of notes so i can come back and think about it later but I do think Enrique was uh, was good with the uh, teacher man to fish kind of analogy. <coughs> oh, really? Hey, go away, cough. So, um, but I like the fact that as well that people were talking about the different ideas of students and tools. I was actually thinking about it from a, a teacher point of view. And the reason I chose the, the quote is because I've worked with educational technology for many years. And I think as teachers, we get very um we see lots of nice shiny tools out there in technology but actually they don't do a lot to change our teaching we tend to do the same things as we usually did with the nice shiny tools <coughs> i've really got a frog in my throat as we start that's really not good um and so um what i was thinking about was the fact that over the last well depending where you are in the world obviously you're in spain but around about eight weeks around the world um almost all teachers have had to deal with a new tool and instead of worrying particularly about all the new shiny bits a lot of teachers has picked up a new tool and got on uh with uh, their teaching and so my part of that 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 last part of the quote instead give them a tool the use of which will lead to new ways of thinking i think it encapsulates what i as a teacher trainer have been seeing over the last few weeks when I've been watching lessons and dealing with teachers in the fact that we've all got this new tool and we've all learned to adapt to it. And it's very interesting that how I think how uh, the teaching world has adapted to uh, this new tool, this new online environment for teaching. I've been working in it for about 10 years, so it's very interesting to see everybody else now joining me and, and working out how it works. And that kind of underpins my talk. I realize um, this you know that you've been teaching online for for a number of weeks now but um i think coming into online teaching uh, there are lots of and i think you would have probably had some of the opinions i'm going to show over the next uh, half an hour there have been a number of um ideas and thinking about online teaching and people have had to get used to this new environment so what i wanted to do was kind of take a retrospective look over the last eight weeks look at some of the ideas that people have been talking about some of the fallacies people have been talking about uh with online teaching but also try and address those with some practical ideas and what i would like to do is uh, while i'm going to talk i hope that the chat box is going to join me in this journey and we're going to play a few games i'm going to ask you a few questions and what I'd like to present to you is the Bluffer's Guide to Online Teaching. Uh, now, many of you might be confused as to what a bluffer is. If, if I said Bluffer's Guide to any of my friends here in the UK, they would know immediately because the Bluffer's Guide is something that uh, that is, is something that's quite common. And we'll get to that in a moment. But to warm you up, get your fingers ready into the chat box. Are you ready? I am going to show you a list of words. Okay. I'm going to show you a list of words. What I would like you to do is put a number for how many of those words you know. Okay? I'm not going to check. I'm not going to ask you to tell me if you know what they mean. So all you have to do is put a number. Are you ready? Here we go. List of words. So into the chat box, please. How many of these things do you know? 12. Uh, surprise there. Um, so Murray's gone for 12. Sally's gone for 12. Janet, Enrique, I can see you all typing. Janet's gone for 10. Very honest. Okay, <clears throat> Susanna's gone for three, nine, six. It, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. You know as many uh, as you uh, as you. <clears throat> so it would seem that our our um, our know alls were the first two people to type. Oh, there we go. We got another twelve in there. 
Now, I am going to be a mean teacher. I'm not going to define them for you. So if you actually don't know what they are, you'll need to click on that link to go and find out what those words uh, mean. But you'll notice, I think, that I think you'll guess if you've even if you know a few of them. These are all words that are um, ha have been used with very high frequency in, in the English language over the last few weeks. And in fact, they've been used with so much frequency, they're now um, entering properly into the dictionary. So you'll find these 12 words are entering either into the Oxford English Dictionary or in America into the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. I have to confess that uh, when I saw this list for the first time, I would, if I was being truthful, I would have said uh, 11. Um, the one I didn't know is infodemic, uh, which is the spreading of, of false information around the world now. But I asked you to, um, I asked you to put a number in the chat box. I didn't say, I said I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to check on you, you know, um, uh, you're all way too honest. So none of you, <clears throat> none of you are, uh, none of you are particularly good bluffers. Um, if, if, um, uh, well, I think it was Mary and Sally were the first two people to post. They put 12. Nobody knows if they're right, but they came in with confidence and they said 12. So this talk is about bluffing and about showing the confidence you have. Uh, and I wanted to see how many of you would bluff and not many of you would. So let's go. The Bluffer's Guide. So as I said, The Bluffer's Guide is a book that has been um, around for, for about 60, 70 years in the UK. And there are Bluffer's Guides to everything. So there's a Bluffer's Guide to horse racing, archaeology, wine, opera, etiquette, Brexit, so many of them. So they are a very well-selling book, In the, as you can see from this quote from uh, Wikipedia. Andres, correct, exactly, 12 is what you should have said. So the Bluffer's Guide is a handy guidebook to give you the knowledge you need to uh, to allow you to survive in a situation. And as you can see, the books are very popular. They've sold over 5 million copies. And if you look at what the books uh, say, they say things like this. Instantly acquire the knowledge you need to pass off as an expert in the world. Know what to say and know what not to say and never be lacking information again. Let me show you an example from the Bluffer's Guide to Etiquette. And you can see here, let me just find my uh, find my arrow. There we, you, here we go, you get the do say, don't say of the Bluffer's Guide. So in the Bluffer's Guide to Etiquette, it teaches you that in polite society, you say, how do you do? And it also tells you that you should reply to how do you do, with how do you do? This is very typical English language teach you. So in polite society, if you want if you want a bluff that you know everything, you say how do you do, and you reply how do you do. So I'm taking this concept of looking at what to say in a situation and applying it to online teaching, and I'm doing that because as a teacher trainer, I have been dealing with so many teachers who have talked about things they can and can't do in online teaching. Um, so much so that um, I googled uh, what <laughs> myth No, it was me that lost my connection. Hello, can you hear me again? Hello. Sorry, can you see me again? Hi. Yep, there you go. <laughs> it's that time of the day when the UK internet disappears. I do apologise. I hope I wasn't away too long. Did you work out the myths while I was while I was away? So um, what I was talking about, and apologise as I as I could. Oh, thanks, Sally. So um, what what I was talking about was the idea of myths. Uh, in education and that as a teacher trainer I had heard so many myths and so many uh, inaccuracies over the last few weeks so much so that I googled the phrase um, myths of online education and you can see that if you google myths of online education there are 87 million results uh, for it so I looked through some of these pages and they're all a bit clickbait, you know, seven myths of online education, eight myths of online education, 21 myths of online education, and, and so on. They all seem to have a number. And I didn't look through 87 million, but I did look through a lot of them. And I found that some of these myths were very common. And, you know, so the, 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 the thread came up time and time again. So what I present to you is the Bluffer's Guide to uh, Online Teaching and how to say the right things in the right situation.
Okay, so here we go. Myth number one then. Myth number one is you have to be tech savvy. To be an online teacher, you have to be tech savvy. How do you feel about that? Do you agree with that? Do you disagree with that? Has your opinion on that changed over the last few weeks? I can see a couple of people are typing. So let's find out what to say. Not really. That's good. It certainly helps. Yeah, okay, not necessarily. I like the idea of us, you know, that's a good one, Christina. I'm with you there. I, I would say, Joanna, of course, it does help. Thank you. It doesn't agree. I've improved a lot. Okay, so if you hear somebody say, well, to be an online te uh, teacher, you need to be tech savvy, what you shouldn't say is, yes, you know, students are digital natives. Um, so what we shouldn't say is that, and I think one of the things that I've noticed over the last few weeks is that. Uh, teachers make this wrong a uh, wrong assumption that our teenagers are, are especially are, are so-called digital natives a phrase i completely disagree with um and and that they're going to be the ones confident in the online classroom and i'm the i'm the teacher that you that i don't know what to do with it so uh you know students are digital natives what does that mean it's actually a meaningless phrase it's a, it's a, it's used if you actually think about who uses it it's used by publishing companies and advertising companies um it digital natives is what everybody uses a computer <laughs> you know almost everybody has a mobile phone um what um what i really dislike about it is that it, it it means that as teachers and what i've seen as teachers we assume that our students are going to be comfortable working online not true how many uh, up to about eight weeks ago how many students um yeah sarah exactly how many students had been in an online room probably not many and in fact most of us were probably joining for the first time into an online room as a teacher and a student yes our young students, younger students might Snapchat, Instagram, uh, older ones might Facebook and so on. But it doesn't mean to say that they know how to use technology in an educational context. One of I wear a number of hats as jobs and one of the jobs I actually do is I work at the University of Oxford teaching digital literacy to postgraduates. So these are people who have already got a degree and yet they don't know how to use the internet properly or how to use tools for researching and those kind of things. So I think it, it, it makes our job as online teachers harder if we do if we do fall down this road of digital natives. So we don't say students are digital natives. What we say is, uh, let me move on. Let, what we say is this. <laughs> And it's too much for me to read, but models and typologists can be very useful. Prensky's digital data is models incredibly simplistic, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so we don't say students are digital natives, but more importantly, we consider this idea of digital literacy. And if you've read the uh, Oxford University position paper on, on digital literacy, you will know that this is you know one of the global skills that um, a lot of students lack. And we, as even though we're language teachers primarily, we you know probably come with a little duty to help the students understand technology and understand it in ways and use it in ways that are both safe, good, and you know and will develop their education. So um, how well how can we put that into practice? Well, for example, uh, although many of you are beyond your first lessons, I realise that. But actually, what in the first lesson online, we shouldn't assume the students understand the room. We should teach the students the language they need to get up by in an online room. And this is a this is a little bit of a joke from uh, the Reddit site. Um, the links are live, by the way. So if you click on it, it should be it should open, and so you can book bookmark the page. But these are, um, this is the language that we should be teaching with students uh, students, and teaching them how to operate in a room. And if, in fact, if you think about the language of working in an online room, then if we're teaching our students our language, we're teaching them um, good phrases like, how do you do this? How do I turn on the mic? Can you tell me how to turn on the mic? How can I do that? Um, and you can even turn like the CEO of the Common European Framework things, the I can statements into technology ones like I can chat in the chat box. I can do this. So we should um, exactly, Sophia. So, you know, our myth number one is that students are, are digital natives and therefore we should be able to, um, uh, we should just get on with it. But that's not true. The same analogy came up with Zoom. You, and, you know, lots of people are now using Zoom for their lessons. And you, if you read the news on Zoom, you saw this massive influx. Everybody, when teachers went from teaching in the physical classroom into online, they chose Zoom. And about a week after Zoom, the Zoom backlash started when Zoom bombing happened. Uh, yeah, Rosanna. And like everybody was looking at this, everybody go, oh, it's all, all educationally unsafe. No, actually, it was probably a cause of 
of people not being very digital literate. Now, I know there are many other reasons, but, you know, teachers were doing their best to get lessons online, but nobody actually told them how to make Zoom safe. You know, that, that, you know, and the students were publishing the links on social media so anybody can find them and this, that and the other. So digital, being a digital native or being digitally literate works both ways. We, you know, teachers needed to up their skills and be taught how to do it. Uh, but so do students. So myth number one, don't assume your students are digital native. You don't have to be tech savvy. Myth number two, and you see this in many of those websites, online students don't get to interact with their teacher. So what I would say there is don't say, yes, that's true. This is my show. Why do you need to interact with me? I'm the teacher. Listen to me. I will tell you. <laughs> so don't say that as the myth. But perhaps what we should say is it's not a question of don't get into act, but how are they going to interact? Is it going to be on mic? Is it going to be in the chat box if you're doing something asynchronously? Is it going to be on discussion boards? So let's do uh, an activity that I would do in my physical classroom. I would certainly do in my online classroom and, uh, best, um, or, and also in my asynchronous classrooms. Um, Eliza, Elisa, ask me the question again in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, okay? So let's do an activity. Are you ready? Here are four pictures that sum up things I have been doing uh, in um, lockdown. Now, bear in mind that um, unlike the Spanish in, in the UK, lockdown until the Spanish now I think uh, from all the time of our lockdown we are allowed out so we are allowed out to exercise once a day so here are four pictures from my mobile phone okay four pictures from my mobile phone of things I have been doing during lockdown in the chat box please what have I been doing okay what have I been doing sensible answers only burning food thank you Sally yeah actually the, did get the heat a bit too bad on that one <laughs> taking photos, taking photos, Ingrid, yeah, the obvious answer, going for a walk, uh, <laughs> working a lot, uh, none of them are work, none of them are work, although I have been working a lot, meeting animal friends, very true, working on home, it's not a work picture, but it's true, I have been working online at home, but it's not a work picture, so you can see the, we've got the interaction going on already, now there are 100 and, uh, about 140 of you in the room, so I can't put you all on mic, so I'm using the chat box. If I had a smaller group with my, my class, then we would use chat box. Watching films, preparing food, <laughs> enjoying nature, and walking barbecues, bread making. I, I, I like the, I, I, I do make bread, but this isn't bread. Believe me, this is not bread. You would not want to eat that. <laughs> okay. So as the last as the last people type into the box, so these are four pictures from my mobile phone. You can see I used, and Sal, that's closer. Um, you can see that at the bottom of the, the last picture, it says pick collage. So this is a collage making app. And basically I open it up and I choose the four pics that I want uh, and it saves as a picture. And then I can use it as a collage. Now, when I do this exercise in my online rooms to get my students to teach, you know, to get, let them find out more about me, then um, I do it first. So I put the pictures up and then the people ask me questions about it. But in subsequent lessons, I get my students to create the pictures about them and share it, share them. So for me, it's not about me doing the task. It's about the interaction of everybody. Yeah. Uh, and you can do this in many ways. Um, it's from my mobile learning book. So I've, I put many spins on it. But this one is to know about me. So picture one, uh, you can see the deer. I think uh, Montserrat said hunting. Uh, no. So this is a forest which is about a kilometer away from my house. Uh, and I tend to go walking there most days um, for it. But one, I mean, lockdown is lockdown is uh, is a terrible thing. I, mean, I know I appreciate that. But there are, but I do find there are a few positives. And one of the, one of the positives is that there are fewer people in the forest. And um, I, in the last 10 years that I've lived in Oxford, I have been, I, say, I go to this forest quite a few times a week. In the 10 years, I've probably seen the deer three times in the whole 10 years because there's so much noise going on but since lockdown i pretty much see them every day um and i think that's really uh, interesting so i've been going for a walk in the forest uh picture number two as uh sal says i've been burning the food yeah uh so we've tried to keep things varied and we go outside and have barbecues quite a lot in the garden so we've got a garden that's lucky 
uh, I'm going to do the picture under the barbecue, which people thought was online teaching. It's not. I'm a big board game fan. Board gaming is one of my hobbies, and I've got so much, so many board games down here, you wouldn't believe. And one of the things I miss in lockdown is having my friends around to play board games. So that is board game night done on Zoom. And if you actually look at the red tablecloth, you will see that there's a game laid out on it. Above the tablecloth, there is an iPad, and the iPad is taking photos of the, or take these, is broadcasting the pictures onto the Zoom, and then we play on Zoom. That's how we play the, that's how we play the board game. <clears throat> and the last picture, the last picture um, is, um, it's not bread. Um, somebody said it, oh, Salah said it looks like poop. It's fossils. Okay, <laughs> they're fossils. Um, my uh, um, my son is five and a half, and every day he tie. He, no, they're not real fossils. Bear with me. That if you have if you have young kids or you teach young kids and you want some English programs, I really recommend this program on YouTube called Let's Go Live. Okay, and it's live not this week, but it's live every day in the UK at eleven o'clock. And they take a subject, and they're they're two BBC presenters, and they're just locked at home, so they do this program. So they they take a subject like nature or whatever, and they talk about it for half an hour, and it few and you know they, all the kids then make everything that's in this program. So one day it was on dinosaurs and they decided to make dinosaur fossils. Uh, so immediately the program was finished. I had to make dinosaur fossils. And so the recipe, if you want it, is uh, I think it's two tablespoons of used coffee, two tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of, oh, not tablespoons, cups of sand, of flour and some water. And you mix it all together. And then you take my, you take like the plastic dinosaurs toys and you put it in the middle and case it round and you leave it to dry. And it takes about two or three days to dry. And then you put them out in the sun. Uh, sorry, then you put them out around the garden or wherever around the house and the kids can go fossil hunting. So there you go. They are fossils. But you see the interaction that's going on. Okay. So, I, you know, this myth of the interaction of the... Uh, of, of the online rooms is not true. We've got plenty of interaction going on. Here. It comes back. Okay, so number three, I'm, I should be back again. It should it was a it was a blip of a connection uh, with it. Uh, hopefully, you can uh, you can see me again now. Are we all there? So number three is the online courses offer no interaction with fellow students. So don't say uh, it's so. Um, it's so true. No chance of pair work or group work. And what we do say is. What do you think a breakout room is for? Now, of course, breakout rooms do depend on the technology that you've got. So Zoom, for example, has a breakout room, but Adobe doesn't. Teams doesn't have one, obviously. Google doesn't have one. But breakout rooms are very great for interaction with students. And what I like to do is actually try and do something different. So um, I, in my breakout rooms, I play escape game, escape room games. So escape, so in Zoom, we play escape the Zoom room. So you put the students into the escape room, uh, to, into the Zoom room, into the breakout room, and they have to escape. And to escape, in this case, they have to find the code. So they have to work together to try and find the code to get out of the room <laughs> okay so they have to find out what the code is in order to uh, to get out of the room so we put the students in the breakout rooms we get them to talk together and we hope that they will um, uh, find the uh, you know. <laughs> uh, so um, anybody want to try and get uh, what the uh, what the breakout rooms is uh, in 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 meet uh in go um in, in in google meet that's true that you can't do it there but you could escape the discussion forum if you're using meet then you're probably using google classroom as well so you could do it that way uh with it okay um so um so rather than just give normal activities in the breakout room one thing you could do is give lots of escape room puzzles and here's an uh, here's a, uh, adobe connect has break breakout room sarah i could put you all in a breakout room now in fact if i go back a couple of slides you see that picture there that's an adobe connect room this this one on the on the on the left here so you see the breakout rooms there uh, so you just need to switch it on. Obviously, in, in when there's 140 people in the room, we can't switch it on. So that's Adobe, and that is uh, and that is Zoom. Okay. 
So we can do pair work and we can do go out. Rotio, uh, apologies for the pronunciation. No, it's not uh, 602, but thank you for having a go. Um, anybody want to try and escape the Zoom room by getting the code? <laughs> There's only one person having a go at the code. You can, of course, click on the uh, YouTube video and find the answer to it. And there are lots of, if you Google uh, escape rooms and ELT and English language teachers, you'll find lots of puzzles that you can put into your... <laughs> I, I love the fact you keep going. You've got two out of the three numbers now. You have two out of the three. Uh, no, no. <laughs> the, uh, the... Oh, Andreas. Andreas Bravo. Andreas got the got the answer very quickly there. So he has escaped. His group has escaped the uh, the escape room. And of course, breakout rooms can do a lot of different things. So let's do another question in the chat box, please. If you uh, had the choice, would you rather have a kilo of chocolate pudding or a kilo of strawberry? Okay, sorry, strawberry ice cream. So would you rather have a kilo of chocolate pudding or a kilo of strawberry ice cream? Esther comes straight in with strawberry, chocolate, the ice cream's up there, pudding's there, chocolate pudding for sure. I'm, not, I'm really not sure. <laughs> ice cream, strawberry ice cream. Uh, <laughs> so what I would, um, what I would uh, um, do with this, so these are would you rather phrases. And again, I wouldn't give the students all of them, obviously. I would um, pick a few to put into the room. Put them in the breakout room. And it's not the, it's not the actual, it's not the... Um, it's not the putting it in, in the room and saying, oh, okay, which do you want to do? Because they'll all go chocolate ice cream really quickly, okay? What I want to do is get the people in the, in the breakout rooms to agree. Uh, so Marie's gone for the chocolate ice cream, which is in the middle of the two. So three people said chocolate ice cream and one person said, I, uh, one, sorry, chocolate pudding. And one person said chocolate, um, strawberry ice cream. I would want these people to try and convince this peer person to go for chocolate pudding. They could only order one, so which would they order? And again, this works really well in the breakout room. I can pop in and listen to them, see what kind of language they're doing, and take it forward like that. If you don't have a breakout room, these do work really well in another situation, and that would be at the beginning of a lesson. I think at the beginning of the lesson, we were always beset by um, you know people coming into the room trying out the audio, a few little, few little issues here and there. And we don't want the students really uh, doing a key task right at the beginning of, of the class. So what we try and so I always try and do five minutes or so of um, of activities that aren't as important. So this one would work also as kind of a warmer in that sense. Okay. So we've had three myths so far. So things that we tend to do in break rooms, pair work, discussion, role plays, interviews, and problem solving. And these are typical, these are more typical activities that we would do in a breakout room. You know what, boys? I don't know. I don't know every room off by heart. So myth number uh, number five is online courses are, aren't fun. The teacher is no fun either. Okay, online courses aren't fun. The teacher is no fun either. And I think the myth from this can be, don't say, yes, I miss the physical classroom and playing games. I dislike the routine. Exactly. The fun is in the teacher. And the more fun the teacher is, the better they are. And it's easy to have fun. So let's do say, uh, play. Let, so rather than say, don't say, let's do say, uh, right, everyone, let's play a game. Okay. Uh, shall we play a game? I, I know I'm going to be uh, almost into question time, but let's play a game. Okay. So in your, in, so if you look at your chat box, you can, if you look in the top right corner, you can change the color of your chat. Okay. So if you click at the top right of the chat box, you can change the color of your chat and it can become a different color. Okay. Everybody change the color of the font. Type into the chat box so we can see the new color. If you can't change, don't worry. Okay. So everybody type. So we've got some blues. We've got some purples. We've got some pinks. We've got, all right. Okay. Purples teams looks quite big. We've got some blacks. If it doesn't change, it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Okay. Your color choice is your team name okay your color choice is your team name so if you chose pink you are now in the pink team if you're in the blue you're in the blue team if you're in that can't change my color then you're in the black team all right got it so i'm going to watch the chat box when i give a question and the first team i see give five five people give that give an answer they get a point ready steady 
let's go then so your first question things that are red come on then team things that are red who's going to get things that are red so i run as always a blue team red team blue team perhaps purple team I'm going to give it to purple team. So that's one point to the purple team. Congratulations. Okay. Let's go for a different one. Give me a country beginning with B, S, or T. B, S, or T. Go. Uh, Brazil straight in the purple. A storming way. Blue's there. I think that's purple. So that's purple one point. And I think that's bl uh, blue one point. Is that right? I, f I forgot who I'm scoring. Let's go again. Another question. Adjective to divide the, to describe a person. Are you ready? Go. Okay, clever. So purple's in there with clever. Ooh, could be a red. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give that to red. So that's three teams on one point each. <laughs> All right, let's go for our last question then. We'll have to give this double point so we can get a winner. Okay, two points to this one. Oh, Rossi, no. Okay, purple has two. Thank you. All right, three points to this one then. Okay, three points to this question. An idiom of more than four words. An idiom of more than four words. Go. <clears throat> <laughs> so we're looking for an idiom and we're looking for some words birds of feather greens in a it's interesting the two idioms that came out are exactly the same three idioms exactly the same it's looking like it's going to be purple 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 team purple team give yourself a clap everybody else give yourself a clap but you see there, I mean, like this is just a typical board race. This is this is a, a, a this is a a simple activity that we would do in the physical classroom. I get my students on the board. Here we're just doing it in the chat box. And if you if you are in a if um, here I I randomly let you cho choose colours because um, because there are so many of you. Um, you could uh, appoint people and in zoom where you can't use colors i use random numbers depending on the size of the class so students decide what number they're going to be in it and you see we've we've, we've rehearsed for uh, or practiced vocabulary and so on so i think that's a very interactive task and if you think about the room there are lots of things you can do in the room which are probably better so for example watching video uh, watching video in the classroom is tends to be a solitary process so you watch the video and the students do their exercises but if we watch a video online and if i should like if i'm in zoom i could share my screen show the youtube video for example the students can actually take uh, join in in the chat box and create almost like a viewing party which is a very normal thing so you could get the students actually watching the video and or listening to a song or doing a listening and typing into the chat box as they go along and i think this is much more realistic than perhaps some of the things that we tend to do in the elt classroom another thing you could do is invite a, a, a virtual guest you know this is a massive in, uh, project in language you know who would you like to invite what would the email be what would you ask them and so on and if they pick somebody sensible they could actually you could genuinely invite another class into your classroom you know a different teacher from a different country and into the classroom and you could you could do all these things and that's much easier to achieve than it might be to achieve in a in a in a face-to-face -face classroom so the online environment actually does gives gives it yep yeah, if if um if um if the fee is right that i would be invited <laughs> uh people are not good at writing um well i wouldn't do writing i don't think writing lends itself very well to an online environment anyway i would tend to do that more on google docs or, or something they'll say uh, and do it collaboratively so often i get my writing done on a google doc so then we share and work together does that make sense uh for it but i um, mean if they're not good at writing in the chat box as a game then i would keep the answers very simple i certainly wouldn't ask the idioms one but i'm not i'm not correcting the writing um um i'm not correcting the writing uh of the of the language i'm just doing the language okay uh, if you want that take a photo i am going to send you you'll get a pdf of of most of my slides so you will see it in there okay yeah, exactly, Zinzinter, but that would be a different webinar. And here's my son, because I've mentioned him already, and you can see he's playing, he, this is his French lesson, and he's playing P Kahoot, okay? And so this is a Kahoot lesson, uh, and it worked exactly the same way. So in, in, in Zoom, obviously you need two devices, but in Zoom the teacher shares the questions, and then they um, they uh, they play along in, in Kahoot. So you see that they... Um, um, you see that they're uh, taking part uh, in the lesson and the lessons are fun with it. 
I don't say I'm, yeah, it's not learning reading it's learning the confidence to read one presumes that they can read this is reading in L2 and that's a confidence issue more than anything else unless they are complete beginners unless you're teaching like my son who is learning to read um, so um, what I would worry about with the reading in that case I would actually try and set the reading outside of the room so so they would do the reading before the lesson and then come into the lesson to discuss the reading and th those kind of things I, I think it's quite I mean obviously an online classroom like this is set up for is set up more for an inter interactivity than it is for the students to do writing and reading that's not to say I wouldn't do them but there are other ways that we could do them so you know asking them to read page 42 before the lesson and then coming in to discuss it is fine and finding things that they do like to read about you know what have they read this week and it, you know again depends on the age of the students but what have they read it, albeit in spanish but can they talk about it in english i mean you know did, did they read you know the text in a game did they do that so look at the things they do like to read and bring that in with it okay and as enrique said start writing about dislikes and di uh, dislikes and likes is is really good they, um i i'm aware that i'm i'm abusing my time so a little bit so i i do need to move on i've only got uh, eight minutes i am answering questions at the same time though he said to his uh, oup minders um so let's go on to myth number seven then you don't need books for online teaching <laughs> so um I think, I, 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 yes, an absolute myth. Esther, I couldn't agree more. So don't say, don't say, hurrah, online teaching releases me from the shackles of, of the curriculum and prescribed materials. Ha, huh, what a load of rubbish. Yes, there are things we can do on the internet. We're online, there's lots we can do. But do say, sorry, are you bonkers? Do you know how many classes I have to teach in a week? Why on earth wouldn't you use a course book? I have no idea why teachers, die. I mean, I absolutely agree if the if the students bring something to the classroom that you want to talk about that's not in the class book then I'll go with it but why on earth would you get rid of the course book for simply because you're online I just don't this bonkers to me and I know and you've got people like OUP who have you know a lot of students lost a lot of the book left a lot of the books in the school but at Oxford University Press has made things available like the classroom tools etc that you can still use with the students so yeah just I mean going with the students doing something um doing something different absolutely but don't be mad use the course book when it comes up um because you need to and um, but also again it allows us to do things in a slightly more creative way you know instead of instead of doing the things in in that they would you know they do the exercise in the in the in the book and then we do feedback as we might do in the classroom then we um then we can put things on slides so if you, you know for example number one for a job what's the verb into the chat box, what's what's the verb so you see that so now you should get we'll see a, apply and a lot of people there look has come up uh, both correct Sophia's come up looking has come up and you know I've got this ability this is great I get the students working on all this different language this is a course book exercise but <laughs> praying <laughs> thank you Rosie, that's very funny um so you know we we by by combining our book with our slides with our images we, we can actually take the learning a lot more than than we might do in a in a in a, in a physical classroom so our last myth myth eight you have to change your teaching style to be an online teacher so many people tell me the same thing you have to change your your uh your teaching style agree yeah no absolutely not why would you why would you you are you are brilliant at what you do yeah yes you might ad have to adapt some of your exercises but surely surely in a world that is completely turned on its head at the moment what your students are looking for is things that they can find comfort in things that they know to be unchanged and that's you the teacher yeah the more that you are you as they would see you in the classroom in the physical classroom the more as they see you online the safer they feel and you know and i think you know that 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 um and i will mean it does that's a really good way of sum, summing up that that means change but style doesn't have to what i will say uh, as my closing bit or almost my closing bit then is that what has gone on over the last um eight weeks or so is that and i think teachers uh, teachers have not got the credit they deserve for this we took what was done in a physical classroom and in a matter of hours or days we put it online okay and not a lot of people are giving us the credit that we need for that obviously not i mean care workers and and doctors etc 
you know they they need all all the support of that but we as teachers are the bit that's keeping a lot of communities together uh we are we are we are the normal part of our of our students lives when they see us in class when the family see us uh, uh, etc that is the bit of normalcy that's a bit of bit, bit of us of the world being right so having to change a teaching style to be an online teacher i thoroughly think is a myth and i really disagree because what i've tried to show you is a number of myths and exercises that we uh the, the number of myths which i don't think are true but ones that you've addressed over over um the um over the course of the eight weeks and i think you've probably to toyed with yourselves and hopefully i've given you some reassurance and confidence in that area but also i've tried to give you some practical ideas that you could use in your class now eagle-eyed people i have been bluffing you since we started anybody know how that's your last question if you want your badge of honor i have been bluffing you since we started do you know how <laughs> I do own a barbecue. Was anybody counting the myths? <laughs> you will find that there are not uh, there are not eight myths at all. You will find that I have covered that I that there are six myths in a well done those of you that put six. <laughs> I wanted to see if anybody would I wanted to see how many people would notice as as teachers. So there you go. Bluffing all around, how to be a bluffer online, how to bluff your students and stuff. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm so sorry that I crashed out a couple of uh, of times. Not naughty, just trying to see who was keeping up with me. So thank you very much uh, for it. I do have about a minute left where I have to hand over. There was a question about chat box and microphone. I think that it would depend on how much that there are the, the, how, when to use the chat box when to use the microphone obviously in a micro in this scenario we could never use the microphone but i would have the microphone on quite a lot with my class but I, you know in that first lesson when i teach the when i teach them the can do i teach them microphone hygiene as well which is um that students should wear headphones because uh, it kills sound and mics are should be off when they're not being used and then they switch them on when they're on anyway that's uh, i've answered all the questions you can get me in my blog sorry i do really apologize for dropping in and out I, it's really annoying but i hope it didn't put you off too much thank you to those of you that were eagle-eyed and spotted it um you, oh, there is a slide with with most things in uh, uh sorry a handout with most things in obviously some of the pictures are, are copyright but thank you thank you for oup for having me thank you for taking part